Cash is king. We've all heard that one before. But the reality is, the closer we are to the king, the more powerful cash becomes for us. And the farther we are from the king, the more harmful cash becomes to our livelihoods. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore how the unequal distribution of money in our current fiat systems benefits those closest to the government and harms those farthest from the government in a phenomenon known as the Kantian effect. Kantian is a French word that is sometimes pronounced in English as Cantalon. We will also discuss how this could be playing out in the crypto markets in ways we can protect ourselves from it going forward. This video is brought to you by Ifani, a mobile phone security service that guarantees 100% protection from SIM swapping attacks. More on them in a bit. Awesome, let's explore the Kantian effect. Let's start out with exploring how banks work by breaking down three theories about where money comes from. One, the mainstream theory is that banks are just financial intermediaries that lend out their deposits, which involves banks making loans to borrowers from deposits made by customers at a certain interest rate. Customers' savings accounts accrue interest to incentivize them to keep money there, and the bank charges interest on the loans they issue to borrowers to pay interest to the depositors as well as themselves. And the regulatory framework that has been used to manage this type of money creation is reserve requirements, where a bank is required to keep a certain amount of capital, which dictates the amount of loans they can make. The idea was to place restrictions on banks to avoid banking crises. And though this type of regulation was imposed back in the 1980s, tons of banking crises around the world have occurred since. In fact, between 1970 and 2010, the International Monetary Fund reported over 425 systemic banking, monetary, and debt crises, which worked out to about an average of 10 per year. Which brings us to the second banking theory on how money is created, called the fractional reserve theory. When a bank lends money, it needs to have excess reserves to use for lending. This method was dominant from the 1930s to the 1960s. And what ended up happening is banks became interconnected, shifting different reserves between each other on a nightly and weekly basis, essentially leveraging against each other, creating a money multiplier effect, which piqued a lot of people's interest. The creation of leveraged money in the global financial system was very experimental, and ultimately, this theory was replaced on purpose in the 70s with the mainstream theory that banks are just financial intermediaries that aren't particularly special. The ultimate goal being, oh, there's nothing to see here when in reality, there is a very big important thing happening that harms pretty much all of us except the top 1% of people around the world. So the third theory of banking is the most true, accurately depicting how the global financial system actually works, which was the most dominant in the 1920s and 1930s. According to this theory, banks are not just financial intermediaries. Banks are the main creators of money. So when you get a loan, New money is created out of thin air and thereby increases the supply of money in circulation. And this theory that banks create money out of nothing is suppressed and largely unknown by the masses by design. But it is the most accurate because it's the only banking theory that has been proven with empirical evidence. So let's explore why this theory is suppressed and how it benefits a few people while harming the rest of us. The fact that banks create money from nothing makes them extremely powerful because at the end of the day, they get to determine who gets the new money via loans, who gets the new money and what they end up doing with it. Whoever gets the money and what they decide to do with it has a huge, serious impact on the economy. If banks create money for a person or company to buy real estate, they are essentially pumping money into the real estate market, which causes prices to rise. If banks create money for a person or company to use to consume goods or services, they are essentially causing inflation. When banks lend money to people or companies for assets, it creates asset bubbles that burst, which causes banking crises. This is what caused the 2008 recession. Banks created money out of thin air for everyone to pump into the housing market. And when everyone couldn't afford to pay the loans, the housing bubble burst and took down a lot of banks with it. There are actually positive cases for creating money out of thin air, but it's better to think of this process as monetary expansion that is actually necessary for economic growth. So when banks create money for a person or company to grow a business, a business that creates and performs valuable goods and services, this creates growth in the economy without inflation. 
Those types of loans create jobs, foster innovation. As technology gets better, things become cheaper over time and generally gives us everything we want for society without all of the negatives. But clearly, that's not happening. So let's talk about what is happening, which is the Kantian effect. The Kantian effect was coined by Richard Kantian, an Irish French economist and a banker, in a piece of literature he wrote called Essay on the Nature of Trade in General, which was published in 1755. In this essay, he stresses the importance of entrepreneurs as drivers of economic activity, who are traders, innovators, and merchants that take on risk and ultimately earn profit from taking on risks. Keep this in mind as we explore another key element of this essay, where he explores the non-neutrality of money, which is more popularly known as the Kantian effects. This phenomenon is all about how new money enters an economy. The people or entities that create money are deciding when new money enters the economy, where it enters the economy, as in which sector or industry it enters the economy, for what purposes, whether it be for asset purchases, consumerism, or business growth, and ultimately which people or entities get the money. So what's important to note is when new money enters the economy, it is not equally distributed across the economy. It's not equally distributed across sectors, across asset classes, and most importantly, not equally distributed among people and businesses. When new money enters the economy, it first goes to bankers, bureaucrats, and politicians. They are the first to reap the benefits of new money. This unequal distribution of money impacts individual wealth and is the key cause and driver of injustices in our modern society. Because when banks give their friends money, they get to spend it on whatever they want, which is usually commodities and other valuable assets. And they are also afforded the opportunity to take advantage of arbitrage. Since they get the new money first, they get first dibs on using it to buy real estate, for example. And when they are all buying up real estate, the new money pumped into the real estate sector causes prices to increase. And by the time the money trickles down to regular people like you and I, we are unfortunately priced out sometimes. We have been seeing this since the money printer was fired up to prop up the economy during the pandemic. What else went up? Stocks. And all the bankers, bureaucrats, and politicians got their money first, bought stocks, and by the time we got our money, stocks of course were already climbing. So yes, according to the Kantian effect, Whoever gets new money first has an arbitrage opportunity to use the money on goods, services, or assets before prices rise. Banks, bureaucrats, and politicians are able to buy things at reduced prices, therefore have massive financial advantages over everyone else. So basically, inflation that happens from the Kantian effect is pretty much a government-imposed, non-legislative, and regressive tax on our purchasing power as common citizens. This is how banks and governments enrich the wealthy, further impoverish the poor, and why the middle class continues to crumble over time. Lovely. Next, let's explore how the Kantian effect is potentially playing out in the crypto market, as well as what we can do to hedge against it in our journey towards financial freedom. First, a quick note about Afani. People have been losing tons of money from SIM swapping attacks, so as a crypto investor, it's especially important to stay vigilant during these crazy times. Afani is a secure mobile phone service that guarantees 100% protection against SIM swaps, as well as fake towers, eavesdropping, location tracking, spam calls, spam texts, and malware. They are based in the United States, and if peace of mind knowing you will never become a victim of a SIM swap isn't amazing enough, if by some crazy chance you do become a victim of a SIM swap, your secure mobile service with Afani comes with $5 million worth of insurance coverage to protect you from any financial losses you experience from a SIM hack. And when you choose to secure your phone and financial assets with Afani, it is typically only about $10 to $30 more per month than your regular cell phone service. All their plans come with a 100% money back guarantee for the first 60 days. So there's no risk to you for two months if you decide to give them a go. So if you want to check out Afani, scroll down to the description area below and use this link to access their correct and official site. Or feel free to use the QR code displayed on the screen. Cool. So if you're a long-term viewer of this channel, thanks for your continued support. And you've also checked out my trilogy breaking down how the traditional financial system is structured as well as the crypto markets. If you haven't yet, after this video, check out this video by clicking on the link above to get up to speed. Basically, if we understand and think about how Tether stablecoins are created and distributed, we absolutely have had Kantian effects here in our very own crypto economy. Tether, the largest stablecoin by market cap for several years, has never been backed dollar for dollar in reserves. So they've basically been printing Tether the same way central banks print money, 
and distributing it largely among themselves and their own band of crypto friends. Did this give them the opportunity to buy crypto at lower prices due to arbitrage at some point and cause crypto prices to rise? Likely yes, and it will make much more sense once you watch my dedicated video on the matter. And on top of that, the Kantian effect in our traditional financial system also affected crypto from Wall Street using their first to market free money to gamble in cryptocurrency. Lame. So now the golden question. How could we protect ourselves from the Kantian effect? Well, one way like we've been recently discussing together is by increasing our income streams and by ultimately becoming entrepreneurs who take on risk, create value for the world and get rewarded for it through earning profit. Why is it so? Well, when working for someone else, you're usually at the mercy of a fixed income or relatively fixed income if commission or similar is a factor. And as the Kantian effect wreaks its havoc on society, you are a victim of inflating cost of living, which means your fixed income is becoming less and less valuable over time. And if you've only got one job working for someone, you only have one source of income, which can be pretty risky in addition to your income already being fixed. As an entrepreneur, you can ideally transition to a non-fixed income situation. Entrepreneurs find gaps in the market, find opportunities to solve problems in the world, and affect real positive change in the world, all while producing cash flow for ourselves. In this video I posted recently, we explore how digital assets on blockchain technology is going to make it easier than ever to monetize ourselves in the not so distant future, and steps we can take now to get ourselves into powerful positions that will put us light years ahead of everyone else. So make sure to check it out by clicking on the link above. Another way we can protect ourselves is actually by participating in the new networks and ecosystems being built on the blockchain. We are experimenting with new ways to more equitably distribute money and capital via layer one and two blockchain networks and DeFi or decentralized financial applications. Digital assets like NFTs will also create new ways for us to build and distribute wealth, which we explore in the video I just mentioned. Blockchain and cryptocurrencies are creating new ways we can transact directly with each other in a peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem without intermediaries and third parties like banks. In fact, this technology, depending on how we utilize it for our own projects, companies, and future entities, will allow us to become the central bank of sorts of our own unique economies, which we explore together in another video. So there is a silver lining, though the global financial situation has been quite dire for the vast majority of us for at least the last 250 years when Richard Kantian first pointed out the Kantian effect phenomenon. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification to stay up to date on all of the latest videos. So has you heard of the Kantian effect before this video? What do you think about this phenomenon? What are you going to do to protect yourself from it? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there.